Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Amichai Savir and I'm from Dell EMC. Uh, I'm part of the science service team of, uh, of Dell EMC and we provide uh, science services to different business units within the organization and recently we started to work also with external customers. And today I would like to talk with you about one of our projects and walk you through the process of taking it from an idea into production. Uh, since I don't have a lot of time, so I won't uh, drill down into the details of the model, but uh, I will give a short overview of the, what we did there. And if you will have any question, questions, so pre please approach me after the talk. So let's start. So our journey begins uh, four years ago when we went to a roadshow uh, in the company to look for uh, new opportunities in the data science domain. And one such uh, an opportunity was with the IT department in our company. Um, in particular, we met with the IT Global Command Center. The IT Global Command Center in EMC is in charge on monitoring all the mission critical uh, system of the organization. We are talking about an organization with uh, more than uh, 100,000 uh, employees. And uh, it's a huge amount of, uh, of transformation of data that uh, runs there in, in that systems. Uh, an example for a mission critical system uh, includes the exchange, the mailbox of all the employees, the authentication and single sign-on application, Salesforce, etc. And the problem they describe us that they are facing and they, they thought we may uh, have uh, the ability to help them is a lot of time they are getting a call to the help desk that uh, a customer or an employee complains about an issue. And the first thing they will do is to, to run some diagnostics and when we are talking about uh, a complex environment, such as the authentication uh, or the single sign-on operation, it will run in the backend more than one application. So I just point here at four, but sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less than four applications that runs in the backend. And the, the monitoring that they are doing is for each one of the application. And a lot of time they find uh, that each one of the applications are working uh, good. They don't, uh, the, the monitoring tool uh, doesn't indicate anything. They don't indicate anything. But still, the problem is, uh, is occurring, and they, they cannot find the root cause for it or from where it comes. And they consider it as a complex uh, problem because they are dealing with a, a, a complex uh, environment. So the first thing we ask them is how this, uh, these application tools uh, are working. And the idea was all of the application based on rule mechanism. So you can. Uh, uh, fit a rule to different uh, to different type of metrics as you can uh, say that if you find if I, if you got a specific event ID in the logs you will raise an alert if you if you uh, cross a specific threshold you can raise an alert um, uh, and, and, I'm, and threshold I mean for CPU utilization or memory utilization of the host or it can be a different uh, key performance indicator that runs uh, in the application itself um, so they ask us oh sorry uh, the main uh, drawbox that we see in the, in, the, in the entire process is first that the first time they are hearing about uh, an issue is uh, when the customer complains or the, or the uh, employee complains on a problem and, we, and we, we thought we should be more uh, proactive, to take pro proactive approach in that case. The second thing is the silo monitoring tools and they want to have something that is more holistic that can capture the entire environment and not each uh, individual application. And the third thing that we saw is the rules that they told us also that it's very complicated uh, to do an optimization. What should be the threshold that you should put there? And sometimes it's changed from time to time if you change your, uh, your infrastructure. And we want to be more uh, data driven in that case. And they came to us with the following question. They ask, can you predict when one of our services will go down? And I guess this is the holy grail for the IT. Each uh, IT manager will want to answer this kind uh, of question. And the first thing we ask them uh, is what kind of data do you store and how, is how much historical data do you, do you have? And they share with us two main types uh, of data. The first type of data will be performance data. And the second one will be a log event data. The performance data can be a performance of the machine like CPU, uh, memory, IOs, etc. But it can also uh, uh, can uh, contain uh, different uh, 
key, key performance indicator that comes from the application. So if we are talking about the exchange, for example, it can, uh, can have uh, the number of uh, messages that are waiting in the queue and things like this. And the log data will be different operation that runs in the system. If in the performance data I know that I sampled the system every one minute and I got a numeric number, in the log data I will get uh, semi-structured data that can come anytime. So after we examined the data and we, uh, we knew that we don't have a lot of uh, labeling on this data, so we cannot uh, use uh, different uh, classification uh, methods, we thought that we should try to go with an approach of time series uh, analysis and anomaly detection for that problem. And uh, we also looked on uh, some of the patterns and we could identify clear patterns of the working days, the the weekends, uh, different hours of the day, and we could see that there is some peaks and some spikes in the data that we uh, wanted to, uh, uh, to do a further investigation on them. So we came to the business back and we uh, wanted to adjust a little bit the question. Instead of asking, can you predict when one of our services will go down, we wanted to ask the following question. Is the service behaving normally? Uh, and the assumption behind this, uh, behind this question is if I will act very fast on any anomaly of, the, of my uh, environment, I can uh, basically uh, avoid or uh, prevent an issue from happening in the near future. Uh, so after we got uh, their agreement, we started to work on the data and we built uh, a model that takes into account the log data and the performance data that they gave us. The first thing that we will do with the data is to use time series analysis in order to track the signals. And in the performance data, it's very straightforward because I'm getting, uh, I'm getting already a numeric data per minute or per a, a given time. So the frequency is fixed. And I can uh, use this, uh, this data uh, with ARIMA model or, or Holt Winters in order to uh, learn the behavior of, of the data and learn the pattern. Uh, but with the log data, we needed to do some manipulation in order to convert the log data into a time series data, and this is what, uh, what I will describe in, the, in my next slide. After we track each one of the, each one of the signals uh, using this time series uh, models, we wanted somehow to combine all, all the results or all the, all the uh, residuals between the forecast and the, and the actual uh, samples that we got. We wanted to uh, take everything into account and come up with a single number that will describe the, 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 the normality of the, of the system. So you can fit any uh, distribution that uh, are relevant to the problem. In that case, uh, we, use, uh, we use a Gaussian mixture model in order to uh, find uh, how far we are from the center of mass of the samples. Uh, the output, we normalize the output to be a number between 0 to 100. And that was the, the, basic, uh, so the basic approach that we took here. The next slide will describe what we did with the log data. So first, the log data in the single sign-on application or environment in, in EMC uh, generates 10,000 records per second. Uh, so uh, every second we get uh, a lot of data and we need uh, to uh, first uh, capture this data somehow and then uh, parse it, count different events. So in order to do so, you must uh, use a big data platform. In our project, we use Kafka, Apache Storm, and HBase in order to run this uh, mechanism. And uh, other than that, in order to convert the log data into a time series data like, uh, like uh, you see here in this chart, we basically count different things in the log. So the first thing and the very simple thing that you can do is just to count the overall lo uh, logs that you got in each, uh, in each minute, for example. The second thing that you can do is to drill down a little bit and then start to count how many times I saw each one of the hosts that uh, plays in this uh, system uh, in the logs. And then you can do more drill down, for example, to count event ID 100 and, uh, 105, how much time uh, it appears in the log in the last one minute. This allows us, allows us to take into account in our model not only a, 
and error messages or warning messages, which is the thing that most of the monitoring tools we will use in order to uh, monitor uh, uh, an environment in the IT. Uh, but also information event, which we found that can have a lot of, uh, can, uh, can uh, give us a lot of information about the situation in the system even before the error happens because it starts with something that you can uh, see in the information, in the information log events, and then maybe the, the error will come. So after we uh, develop uh, this model, we wanted to take it uh, into a pilot, and we basically connected the solution that we developed, we call it ITO8 for IT operation analytics, uh, into a live data that come up uh, from the single sign-on uh, application of, uh, of uh, Dell EMC. The single sign-on application composed from uh, three main applications. It's the RSA Access Manager, SSO Access, and Federated Identity Management, which is the FIM. And we got an health score that uh, come, up, uh, come out from, uh, from, our, uh, from our solution that describes the health of the entire environment. And right now, we need to go uh, to uh, an evaluation period to see how uh, our uh, solution uh, behaves uh, across time and if we can uh, give uh, some value to, to the company or to, uh, to the global command center in particular. <clears throat> So a nice anecdote about the evaluation period is that uh, one day we got a call from uh, one of the subject matter experts from the authentication uh, service. And uh, he knew that uh, we are running this solution in our lab currently as a pilot. And he told us that a few days ago they had a problem with the system. And he asked us, uh, can you say something about this uh, issue? So we asked them, the first question we asked them is when it happened. And uh, he told us, you develop, you develop a system, you have it run in your lab, so you will tell me when it happened. So we looked uh, in the chart of the health score across time. This is the chart that you can see here. And you can see, you can see that there is a clear baseline around uh, 90%. And uh, eventually in uh, my 11, uh, there is a drop in the health score around uh, 1030. So we told him, uh, we see, we see, we can see a drop in the health score uh, around um, May 11 in 10:30. So he told us, uh, yeah, it was in uh, May 11, but not in 10:30. So we thought, okay, so maybe we have a problem uh, with our solution. And then uh, my friend that was with me in this in the in this call, uh, he told me maybe it's the time differences because uh, they are placed in the U.S. and we are in Israel. And basically, after we asked the guy again if it was in 3.30 p.m., so he told us that that was the exact time, and even the monitoring solution that they had at the time uh, could alert only 30 minutes later. Um, so when, another thing about evaluation of such a, such a mechanism or such a solution is that uh, you have to take into account that if you are running, you're running it and they will act on your alerts, you will never know if your alert was a true alert or a false alert because you don't know if they prevented something or not. So uh, this is a point to think about when, uh, when uh, running such a case. One way to overcome it is maybe to run it on historical data and see how it works there, but, or run it in your labs, and then they, they still need to deal with their, with their uh, problem. <coughs> um, Another thing that I wanted to share with you is uh, when uh, we are talking about the data science teams like us in a, in a big organization, um, always uh, comes the question of how you take the solution or the POC or the POV that this uh, kind of uh, group is building into a production. And a lot of our project involved only us as the data scientists that come up with a solution that can be uh, like a code in Python or something like this, but it's, it's nothing uh, like a real product or something that can run in production. But we are working with a product team within, uh, within our uh, company. So they have their engineering team. I I'll just need to give them an algorithm prototype and maybe work with them in order to implement it at scale and uh, run it in production. And in the, in, the, in the end, we'll find ourselves like creating a new feature to a specific product of the company. But 
in a case when we are working with uh, uh, with a department like the IT, they don't have any engineering team. They don't have the the ability to take a model or something that I created and run it uh, in their in their environment. We need somehow to build uh, a group that uh, have the data scientist skills inside, but also have support and development team and platform team in case if we are dealing with big data. And we created such a team. We call it the Analytics Innovation Group uh, in the LEMC. And we can provide uh, a fully packaged solution uh, if needed. So I will uh, wrap up with uh, summarizing uh, what I uh, just uh, talked about. So the project of ITOA uh, proved a great success uh, in terms of ROI. Uh, the estimation was uh, $25 billion a year. Uh, the solution right now is running in production and monitoring the exchange and authentication environment. And some of the lessons learned from this, uh, this project, the first one is the, especially us, because we are working with different business units, you have to learn the, the, the data. So you need someone from the business someone that knows the authentication system that will, that will uh, walk you through the different log types and work with you. And you, you have to identify this person in advance uh, in order to, uh, to achieve uh, good results and to short the, the exploration of the data uh, in, the, in the beginning. Another thing is the evaluation. This is the point that I already uh, talked about. And it was uh, not an easy task in our case because we didn't define the way uh, to do the evaluation in the beginning of the project. And when it's on running or uh, on the job, it's more difficult to align all the stakeholders uh, to, the, to the evaluation metric that uh, you want to define. I think, uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there any question? Yes. So, thank you for that talk. Once you've gotten all this information together that you're looking at, did you explore whether you could give more information than just a health score? Because I imagine that the folks handling this really want to know the difference between whether they're facing a denial of service attack or a hardware failure or a network failure or yeah. something else. So this is a great question. I have also I have one slide on this that I put it on hide because I didn't know if I will have the time. So maybe I can open it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, maximization the the output uh, the output uh, value because uh, like you mentioned, most of the time just providing a single health score won't help. You need uh, after you saw a drop, you want to do an inv investigation and uh, drill down into the data to see why the health score uh, dropped. And as a data science team, we are not skilled on building a nice dashboard in, uh, in JavaScript, etc. So what we found very easy, and uh, this is our advice to people that want to run a POC very fast and to also give this kind of capabilities, like a drill down. So we use Elasticsearch and Kibana in order to build a, a dashboard that basically uh, visualize all the parse data, all the log data that we parsed. And then you can uh, click on and uh, at the time of the drop and get a lot of information about the situation. Thank you very much. Uh, let's thank the speaker again. And, and our next speaker uh, is Ralph.